What is up guys, it is Lely and we are back with some more PES 18 My Club Divisions. This season we are noob hunting at team strength level 3. The reason I call this noob hunting is because I feel like there's just a lot more players that play at team strength level 3 and a lot of them just aren't that good. I think a lot of the good players do go and play on at team strength level 5. Not that all of them are good, but I'm saying the majority that are at level 5 are actually good players or just good at breaking the game where at team strength level 3 people see it as less of a hassle and less broken but in reality lads this game is just as broken and it has it's scripting it has everything that team strength level 5 does it's just not as punishing because you're not coming up against Ronaldo's and players like that so when people try to tell you that the game's less broken I don't believe that I believe it has script and everything in there as well this first match would be a perfect example of it lads so in this first half this guy kept doing that trick where he lets it run through his legs and there, look lads, I knew he's going for the 1-2, but for some weird reason, it just felt so heavy to defend. And I remember Son saying in the comment section in the last match, the game looks a lot heavier, a lot slower. That spin he did there was actually a good one. He actually did, like, trick me that time. And at that stage, he wasn't doing it that often, but it became so regular that I was starting to read it, but I just couldn't actually respond to it in the first half. So when I say, you know, the scripting and stuff, just watch the halftime stats here, lads. And just watch the way, like here, watch this free kick that I end up giving away. How often is this not a free kick? How often is it where, if that was the other end, his player would take the ball and score from it? And lads here, look at this, simple things. I know exactly what he's going to do, but I just found it so hard to defend against. And again, lads, when it's not going your way, I tackle him, it goes to him. And then he does that trick. My player's switching just isn't like able to keep up to speed with him. And then he ends up scoring the third. And look, when I finally get in there, this is what happens. If that was the second half, lads, as you're about to see, that would end up in the back of the net. So he's had nine shots in the first half, eight on target. I've had one. And it's not because this guy's amazing. He's a good player, don't get me wrong. But it's just my tackles weren't coming off. Passes were being slow and just things like that. Look, he looked so defensively sound in the first half. Look at that. Win the ball, one pass, threw on goal in his half and straight away. Second one, straight away, lads. Straight after the first goal, look, suddenly he can't pass. Tell me how he's going to go from being so dominant in the first half to suddenly not being able to play in the second half, lads. Look at this. He had nothing all game. Here with Vardy, I don't know how. I don't know how I ended up hitting this straight arm. I did go for the far corner, but Vardy just didn't want it. He thought he was safe there. But lads, when the game wants you to score, it's going to happen, lads. Look at his play switching. I can tell his play switching was off. And look at that, lads. In the second half, he had no attempts. Tell me how he goes from being that good to being that poor in the second half. I'm not basing it on him. I don't think that was all down to him, lads. It was just Pez being Pez. So now we're going to the second match of this episode. And like I said previously, lads, there's different ways of being a cunt. And this guy is just a cunt in so many different ways. So you can see there, remember that time I got sent off with Suarez for that one late tackle? Well, that was very identical to that, but this guy only gets the yellow card. And... The first guy of this episode, you know, he had three black balls. I think he kind of white benched. I'm not sure exactly what he did. But to have three black balls there, it kind of tells you you're being a bit of a cunt if you're playing at team strength level three like that. This guy, lads, as you saw, he just would not go forward and he would not want to play. So I could not get the ball. And then the game rewards him like this. So this first touch with Son was meant to be the other way. It was never meant to be going towards my own goal. But, all right, forgive his first touch. But his second touch doesn't respond to my input as well. Why on earth? Is Son going backwards there? I've not even asked him to go backwards. But he takes not one, but two touches in the wrong direction. And then he ends up scoring from that. So he goes 1-0 up. I miss a chance right at the end of the first half. And then you can see here I've got so little of the ball. And this is why I hate Pez 18s. Like, not just Pez 18, but the, all the previous Pezzers. They're rigid formations, lads. I just hate them so badly. Like, you can see what I need to do against this guy. I don't want to go all out attack because it's going to leave me exposed. And I do go quite attacking quite early on. But for some weird reason, when I get my chances, my players just don't want to hit the target. And sometimes it happens. I have them games where my players just need about 20 chances before they score one. Or even before they even hit the target. And again, look at that. I don't know why, but when the guy's playing like the way he is, Konami shouldn't reward him by making my players suddenly go bent. And when I finally hit the target, his keeper makes a save. I had a few other half chances as well. But he gets rewarded with just such like dire play should they shouldn't be rewarded like this so Konami need to sort out these rigid formations they should allow us to be able to just have open formations or something like that because when you have these stupid formations locked on people can close games off very easily so now we're going to the last match of this episode and it's against what I would say is my 
I say best friend or close to best friend. When you see this match, I'm not sure if he still should hold that title. But we go into the first bit of action and I actually come close to, you know, drawing first blood here as I drive out wide to Sane. I think he puts one in towards Murata and then such a tame effort. He was like that all day for me, to be fair. And then, look, lads, this is what you call friendship. He loses the ball. I'm in the party with him. And he goes to me, Lely, I lost that ball through lag. So what do I do? As a good friend, I give it him back by, you know, just knocking it out of play roughly where he lost it. So later on, lads, we'll show you how good a friend I am to him in the sense, how he values our friendship, let's just say that. So he plays one out wide, keeper makes a good save, and this is one of those tough matches because he knows exactly how I play, and I know how he plays as well. So, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's never going to be an easy match for either of us. So you can see here, uh, we were kind of feeding off these sort of chances and kind of crafting them up, but only when I watch this, like, replay now, this is actually a really good goal, so he does really well, some good dribbling, times his, like, you know, movement, times his pass, and slots into the far corner which when I look at how he finishes that there how on earth did Lamar struggle in so many of them chances in the last match I don't know just kind of got me got me uh, thinking there so you can see I set one up right before our time 1-1 one, one. I was more than happy to settle for the point against him because this guy is a good opponent but he's a bit of a cunt as well I'm not gonna lie <laughs> but anyway lads you can see it's a very tough first half and look these, when I'm showing you these sorts of chances it shows you just how tough it was and for some weird reason look you think I've got what five six defenders in my half you think I'd have this covered but when Zaha is allowed to chest it and then you know just volley it in what from five yards out you know something's not right and you can see I was two one down I was thinking yeah I'm gonna get chances I put it in the box here and knocks it out wide and then die here with a good effort on goal but his keeper parries out wide and then lads look at this for friendship look at that Look at that for friendship. Is that yeah? That, that I'm just gonna leave it at that there. And from that, actually, no, because obviously that player was on the floor. Everyone else thought that player on the floor was covering that guy, but he ends up getting up, vacating that space, and then he gets this chance and he ends up hitting it wide. And that's it, lads. It was a very tough match, and that was probably the toughest match of the division, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie. The games where you know, even the other one I lost was nowhere near as tough as that, and the nil nil after that as well. It wasn't tough, lads. It was just one of those matches where. I was missing chance after chance, although it looks like I struggled for promotion, lads. I was just way too relaxed once I had 12 points from the first, you know, what, um, four games. So, yeah, lads, I, if I needed 22, I felt like I would have got 22. It just, I wouldn't have drawn that one one. I would have been a lot more sweaty and things like that. But anyway, lads, I will be back with live calm in the next episode. I'm tempted to go into Team Strength Level 3 just to see would I be able to blast it straight through to Division 1. If I do that, it'll kind of kill the series. I feel like it's more fun just playing at Team Strength Level 5. You just have a lot more impossible things happening there. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, remember to subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace.